Hi everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm a 10th grade student in a Taiwan IB school. It's called the International Baccalaureate. So a lot of you might have heard the term IB and so today I'll be introducing what IB is. So basically it is a education program just like AP. You guys might have heard of AP. Okay. And this program is divided into four sections. So we will just take a look at their official website. So this is their website, it's called, oh, and this um, program can be in three languages. The first one, International Baccalaureate is in English, obviously. The second one is in French, and the third one is in Spanish. So these are the three languages this course can be taught in. And so let's look at their so here it says the International Baccalaureate develops lifelong learners who thrive and make a difference. Let's see. So first, I want to say that it is um, divided into four programs, as I mentioned. And the first one is PYP, Primary Years Program. It is for children aged 3 to 12 years old, which is first grade to fifth grade. And Middle Years Program, MYP, is for students um, from 6th grade to 10th grade. So I am currently in the last year of the MYP program because I'm in 10th grade. And the third one is Diploma Program, DP. It is, it is for um, 11 and 12th grade students. And last one, CP, I'm not really, really familiar with. So today I will just, I won't mention this part. But as, as you can see here, it says it is a program for students in their final school years. Okay. So in today's video, I'll be mainly focusing on PYP, and I'll mention some parts of DP, but I don't want to say too much because I'm not really sure about that yet because I'm not in that program. Okay, so let's look at here. It says, learn why the IB is unique. So about the IB, this is their um, kind of like mission statement. It says, the International Baccalaureate is a global leader in, in international education, developing inquiry, knowledgeable, confident, and caring young people. Our programs empower school age students to take ownership of their own learning and help them develop future ready skills to make a difference and thrive in a world that changes fast. And um, and this is their kind of like education goal. So it says you can see here designed. Okay, but other than all this, I want to talk about how our school works so you can actually know how life is as an IB student. So in all of our courses, um the IB really, um, they really focus on something called the IB learner profiles. So let's just take a look at what that is. And if it's the IB learner profile. Okay, basically it is a set of um, character, like learner profile attributes that you are supposed to show as an IB student. And here are the three, four, five, six, seven, ten learner profiles. And okay, so you can see more about this in their website, but I have a pre-downloaded PDF over here. So this is the IB learner profile. As you can see, as live IB learners, we strive to be inquirers. Here's the definition, knowledgeable, thinkers, communicators, principled, open-minded, caring, risk takers, balanced, reflective. And it says, the IB Learn Profiles represents 10 attributes valued by IB World Sco Schools. We believe these attributes and others like them can help individuals and groups become some responsible members of lo local, national, and global communities. So in all of our subjects, we have something, um, we have different units, right? And in each unit um, or each semester, our teacher asks us to reflect on all on learner profiles. So basically, um, and also in our classrooms, we have these posters pasted around that have definitions of these learner profiles. So basically these attributes are all really like put into our classes and you can see them a lot. And you are supposed to demonstrate all of these as an IB student. Also at the end of each semester, um, and when we were in the PYP program, not in NYP, but when we were, we were in the PYP program, at the end of every semester, our teacher would give us like a jiang zhuang for a specific learner profile. So as you can see, these learner profile attributes are really valued in 
um, the IB program. And also I want to talk about ATL skills. It's called Approaches to Learning, ATL. And these are also some something that um, IB really values. So in every subject, every unit, the teacher, um, we have we have tasks to do. And under each task or each class, each class in general, the teacher would give us ATL skills we will learn in this specific class. So as IB students, we are also supposed to show these ATL skills or use these approaches to learning to learn. And as you can see here, it includes communication. This is also connected to the IB learner profile communicator. So as you can see, these are really connected and really valued a lot in the IB system. And here it has a lot of different um, specific, more specific points that tell you how you can show communication skills. And also here it has um, social skills, collaboration skills, and self-management organization skills, et cetera, et cetera. And all these skills you really have to show in their cl your classes and reflect them on them. Okay, and now I want to talk about um, our tasks for each subject. So in the MYP program, um, each semester we usually have two units and um, yeah, two units. And in each unit, there are something called formative assessments and summative assessments. These are really important. So formative assessments are like um, assessments that help you get prepared for the summative. And a summative is what you will um, have to do once for each unit. It's like a final exam, final project. And for formatives and summatives, um, they are all, they, um, they are all graded based on four criteria: criterion A, B, C, and D. And A is for analyzing, B is for organization, C is for communication, and D is for using language or reflection. So basically in each project, the teacher will give us like specific task clarifications you have to do to meet all the four criteria. And I want to just show you some examples so you can know more about it. Oh, okay. So this website is called Manage Back and it is um, a website that a lot of IB schools use. And our school is Taipei Kushan School. So you can just go here. All of our tax, tasks and everything, um, our classes or school needs are all on this website. So let me just show you, for example, this. Criterion B, C, lab, sensory receptors. This is for our bio class. And when you click in, so it says criterion B and C, right? So for this unit summative assessment, there are two, there are three, three um, projects slash exams you have to do. And this specific one is for criterion B and C. So for criterion A, we will, have a, we will be having an in-class exam. And for criterion D, we will be writing an essay. These are all part of the summative assessments that, um, um, that which we will get grades for for this unit. So let's look at the task specific care of clarifications. So as you can see here, how do I make this bigger? Oh, okay. For criterion B, it gives us levels like what we are supposed to do in this report. And let's just directly look at achievement seven to eight. This is like the highest, um, the best you could do. So, oh, and IB grades are from one to eight, levels one to eight. Okay, and so eight is the highest you can, it's really hard, I can't even get eight. You can't, it's really hard to get eight. So yeah, here it says um, the, like the specific, details you have to do and for criterion c it also shows like what you have to do and let me show you an example of a report so here grade 10 let's look at grade 10 i have biology semester one okay this is my lab experience lab report for um our first unit this semester or oh, wait First, oh, our second unit for the previous semester. And as you can see here, it has, like we have to write a lot for a lab experiment. This is 
kind of like a report we do in the IBE program. Yeah. This is a lot. Okay. Oh, and also something really important in IB is that you need to have citations, in-text citations and um, and citations at the end. They're and all in the MLA format. So as you can see here, after I write this whole entire big report, I have to put citations in alphabetical order. You can see. And we have to use da school databases, basically websites the school gives us. So our school gives us Britannica, so we have to use Britannica. And that's, yeah, that's it. Okay. And so you kind of get an idea of the IB program. Basically, in MYP, we have subjects, and, in, and for each subject, we have formative and summative assessments, and our unit grades are based on mostly the summative assessment and based on criterion A, B, C, D, grades levels 1 to 8. So a full mark would be 8 times 4 is what is eight times the fastest? That's or thirty-two. Sorry. So a full mark would be thirty-two, and at the final um and at the end you'll get a final grade, and the final grade is only from level one to level seven. So thirty-two you will be a seven because it's the highest. Okay, that's basically what the MYP program looks like. And now I want to talk about a little bit about the DP program. So DP program is for grades 11 and 12. And I've done some research over here. What are the requirements for DP and IB? So we are um, required to take three courses at standard level and three courses at higher level. So we have to choose um, the courses we want to take. And also something really important is that you have to write extended essays and take the class of the class theory of knowledge and also CAS. CAS is for um, C is for creativity, A is for action, and S is for service hours. We have to have a total of 150 hours of all of these combined. So like creativity, you could do maybe um make craft, make craft work, like anything. Um anything. And for A, action, maybe play sports attend tournaments, sport tournaments. And for S is service, maybe like um Shanghai, or maybe like serve as a leader for younger students, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you could do a lot of stuff for this, but basically you have to have 150 hours. And yeah. Oh, and also in DP, in 12th grade, we have a IB exam. Let me just, what is the IB exam in DP? Okay, so basically it's like a big is exam at the end of DP you need to take. So um, 12th grade would be really stressful for a DP student. Okay, but that is... It for today's video, I think you get an basic idea of what IB into the international baccalaureate looks like. And as a student of IB, I really feel like you have to do a lot of reports and the reports. Oh, and also the reports are all gathered gathered within like three weeks. So those three weeks would be really, really stressful and you barely get any sleep. I sleep at for like four hours a day on a school day but so in the weekends I just sleep till noon because I'm too tired and also I have a lot of out of class activities such as TISA I mentioned in other videos and also maybe um like I have my own classes for example I play piano and stuff so it's really just really busy and you really have a limited amount of time and it's really hard. But if you work hard, it's not that hard because I mean it's it is hard, but if you work hard, you have and you have you manage your time well, you can like get more sleep because um teachers usually give out the summative assessment packages two to three weeks before the actual summative is due. So it's just okay. 
I want to show you guys my manage back, which is the website we use for our, for our school. And look, so my full calendar. So last Monday, we had this um, math project summative due. It's for Criterion C and D. This INS, which is Individual and Societies project due, and also our Chinese project. And on Tuesday, we did our lab experiment. On Wednesday, um, we have a e assessment and portfolio for music class. And Thursday is our PP. Like every day, it's really busy. And Friday, we have our in-class time analysis essay for English class. This is for Criterion A. As you can see, it should say it's for Criterion A. Okay, it doesn't say. But this is for Criterion A. And then, so it's our long weekend right now. But on Thursday, we have our English oral presentation. And also our lab experiment. That is a lot. Okay, let me show you another example of um, English presentations. So we have to analyze a non-literary text. Let me show you. This is my analysis for our first unit, which is the um, first unit of our first semester. It's currently the second semester. Okay, so table of contents and then statement, introduction to my chosen text, audience and purpose analysis, external structure analysis, title analysis, paragraphs analysis, visual analysis, content, internal structure analysis, content analysis, a lot of stylistic devices and persuasive techniques, persuasive strategies, and then compare and contrast conclusion. And this, and oh, citation is really important. And this whole um, presentation, we have to finish in eight, in 8.5 minutes. So we have to finish saying all of this in 8.5 minutes. That is like so stressful. And I have to speak like super fast and I mean, my English is not even that good. So it's like, blah, 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 and my tongue always get tingled. Okay, so you can see it's really hard studying as an IB student. But yeah, you get the idea of IB and that will be it for today's video. Oh, and also in my other videos, I will put in the description boxes, I would put um how, how that specific event happening in my YouTube video is connected to IB learner profiles or ATL, approaches to learning, because in IB, we really value those learner profiles and approaches to learning. So yeah, you can see in my videos how I show my um, IB spirit. Okay, but that is it for today. Where is my Zoom? Oh, stop, share. Thank you guys. If you've been watching till now, thank you a lot. I think, but yeah, you you know now you know about that view, but um, I'll talk more about IB in the future if I upload any more videos. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Goodbye. Peace out as an IB student. Stop recording.